Applications nowadays are not self-isolated islands. They need to be interconnected. They need to communicate one between the other. One of the most popular ways to communicate between applications is through HTTP. And in the .NET world, this would translate into using the HTTP client. However, when we do this, there are often other things that we need to take into consideration when making HTTP calls. And this will result ultimately in ugly code in our HTTP client. So if you want to know how you can avoid this, stay by because in this video, I will show you some very powerful techniques that you can use to keep your HTTP client clean. Let's dive straight into the code. And here we have a basic .NET 7 minimal API with this default endpoint map get. And here we inject our GitHub client, which is our custom typed HTTP client. We use the client to get the homepage of GitHub as a string and then return that as a result. It's very simple. In order to be able to use this GitHub client, we need to add that as an HTTP client. So that's what we do on the iService collection with this add HTTP client method and we provide the type of the client that we want to add. So it's very, very standard .NET core thing. Now, if we go to the GitHub client, that's how we usually implement it at a very, very basic level. Now, when we do this, we usually want to also have a logger to be able to log some things that happen in the different methods of that specific client. And we might also want to handle exceptions. So we get the HTTP client as an incoming parameter that's resolved through dependency injection as well as the logger. And then we go to our main method, which function from a functionality perspective looks very good because hey, we just do this thing. We get we, we get async, so we get the homepage from GitHub, but we also want to well log some information about that specific request. In our case, we just want to log how many milliseconds that request took. And then we want to just send the response as a string or return the response as a string. But we might also want to, well, think about the scenarios where this method might throw some exceptions. So we have wrapped everything here in this try catch block. Now, if we take a look from a clean code perspective, this code doesn't look clean at all. It has a lot of problems and it doesn't look like well-written prose. And by the way, if you want to know what I exactly mean by that, I have created a video where I have talked through what code like well-written prose actually means and you can get some example there so i will leave a link to that video in the description of this one and you might find it also here in the corner up right and you can click on that now the question is how we can turn this ugly code into well-written and clean code the response to this is very simple there is a very powerful feature in the HTTP client and that is the delegating handlers also called message handlers delegating handlers also called message handlers are not nothing else but regular classes that have usually a method that takes in an HTTP request and that returns an HTTP response. The cool thing about delegating handlers is that they are used usually in combination. Usually there are different delegating handlers chained one after the other. Something very similar to what we used to know in middleware. Now, the thing is that using this concept of delegating handlers, we can build powerful processing pipelines for our HTTP client outgoing requests. And this allows us to just simply move the logic or the cross-cutting concerns into delegating handlers instead of having them in our HTTP client itself. Now, if you think better about this approach of delegating handlers or message handlers, they are really similar to what we know about middleware. So this means that the order in which you register different handlers really matters. Because for instance, the first handler that you register, as you can also see in this photo here, is basically the first handler that will be applied when a request is sent to a certain network location. Then the second one, then the third one, and so on and so forth. Now that we know what delegating handlers are and how they are supposed to work, let's see how we can apply this piece of knowledge to the method that we have here, get homepage async in our HTTP client. Now taking a look into what we're doing here, so the core concept of the core purpose of this method is to make a request with the HTTP client and get the GitHub homepage. But besides that, we also do some logging and we also do some exception handling because we have this try catch block. The way I see is the core functionality of this method should stay simply this get async. That's the only thing that needs to happen here. So it means that everything else is a cross-cutting concern and can therefore be moved to delegating handlers. Now, as here we are doing two totally things conceptually, we do some logging, but we also do some exception handling. I will suppose we would need here two dedicated delegating handlers, one for the logging part and one for the exception handling part. 
So let's go on and implement that. First of all, we need this logging handler class. Now, the only thing that we need to do here is with this class to be a delegating handlers, we need just to implement or to inherit actually this delegating handler class. Now, by inheriting this class, we can simply override this send async method. And here is where all the magic happens. Like, see that we have here this return base and async. We can place all the logic that we want to happen before the request is sent before the return base async. And if we want to also catch and, and do something uh, after we get a response, we can also place something here after. And we'll see how this will work. However, the first thing that I want to do here is, first of all, of course, we need some stuff through dependency injection. Because our delegating handler will also be part of the DI container. So we can resolve, for instance, this I logger which is useful because that's what we use to do the logging of course and of course we'll need a stopwatch for that now the next thing that we can do is we can simply go back here to our github client and what we can do is simply get everything here and i will move everything here in this override of the send async method of course there are some things that we need to change first of all here we don't really send the request because we don't use an http client so instead what we'll do here is will await sending the request further down the message handlers or the delegating handlers line until somebody gets a response like somebody really executes that request and gets the response from github now after we wait that we perform our logging logic like stopping the stopwatch and logging the information and resetting the stopwatch of course the only thing that we still need to add here we need to remove this and we still need to return something because we might have have other delegating handlers that are above us so in that case just like in the middleware we might want to return the response because they might also want to implement some custom logic so the idea is that here we don't return this base base send async but we return the response instead like this and now this delegating handler is good to go now we just need to wire everything up together and the first thing that we need to do is we will also need to add the delegating handler to the dependency injection container and let's add this as a scoped and let's add the logging handler now the only other thing to wire everything up together so that sp.net core NAS does, does know that hey this handler this delegating handler belongs to that specific http client the only thing that we need to do is add mess message handler and here we can specify our logging handler and of course to make sure that we are still using our handler last thing that we need to do here is just remove everything that we don't need anymore in our get homepage async method so we need to delete everything that's related to the logging that we do here when we are sending the request so it would be something like that that already looks much much cleaner than that and of course we can remove this stopwatch because we don't need it anymore the logger itself we still keep it because we use it in the exception handling part and otherwise it wouldn't compile now we are really ready so let's run the application and then let's perform a request via postman to see exactly if our logging handler still works so the application is up and running right now let's send a request we received the 200 okay which is okay now let's evaluate what we have here of course there are some or there is some logging that has been performed by the http client itself like for instance this one system.net http github client logical handler that, that comes directly out of the box by the http uh, client but for instance then this next one you see that this is our custom delegating handler and we see exactly the log that we have created like sending the request to github and then some other things happen and then we have this logging handler once again so this is our custom logger once again and here we see that a request completed in 152 milliseconds so it means or it proves that our logging delegating handler just works now let's apply exactly the same things to the exception handler if you enjoyed this video don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and like this video this will make it easier to discover by other people that are interested it in kind of like the same topic also if you haven't subscribed to the channel already please hit the subscribe button also the notification bell so that you are always notified whenever something new happens here on this channel also please know that i have recently started another youtube channel dedicated for self-taught developers where 
I will tackle a lot of different topics around mindset and also technical topics, but not strictly related to .NET. So if you are a self taught developer or a beginner developer and you think that it might be useful, I will leave a link to the channel in the description of this video. So you might go and check it out and also maybe subscribe there. Let's add our class and let's add here this class and we'll call this exception handler. Of course, the application is still running, so let's just stop it. And we want to inherit from delegating handler, just like we did previously. And here is the code for this delegating handler. Once again, we get the logger because that's what we need here. And we simply wrap this send async into a try catch block. And if we have any error, then we just log it and we retro that. So it's as simple as that. Now let's go back to our GitHub client and let's get rid of everything that we don't need. So it would be basically just remove everything out of this block and just replace it with these two lines of code. To have everything wired up, we need to go back to this program and we need to add also our exception handler builder dot services dot add scope and let's add the exception handler also semicolon and we would be good to go except of course we also need to add this handler to our HTTP client add message handler and this would be the exception handler well now everything is really wired up together right now of course the client will not throw an exception but the whole point is that you see all the code that we had previously is kind of like we have got rid of that so we just have two lines of code here in this get homepage async, which is way cleaner than it looked before. Just like middleware or filters in ASP.NET Core, delegating handlers can be thought about also as decorators around outgoing HTTP requests. And it's useful because the decorator pattern usually helps us to move cross-cutting concern from our main methods into decorators so that we can keep our main methods very clean or as clean as possible. And that's why delegating handlers are a very powerful way to keep our HTTP client code very clean because we can move really all cross-cutting concerns out from our HTTP client itself and into dedicated delegating handlers. Before we wrap up, please hit the thumbs up button and like this video if you think that this content is useful. This will, this will make it easier to discover also for other people that might be interested in similar topics. Also, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, hit the subscribe button and also the notification bell so that you can make sure that you will always get notified whenever something new happens here on this Code Wrinkles channel. And if you have any question, if you have any thoughts, if you have anything that you would like to talk about, of course, regarding .NET, then don't be shy and head over to the comment section of this video and leave a comment and I will be more than happy to get in touch with you and get a discussion going. This being said, thank you very much for watching and until the next time, I wish you the very best.